I wish I were somewhere else, somewhere warm. Yeah, somewhere like uh, Pittsburgh. No, um, Miami. No, West Palm Beach. Yeah, in uh, in April. No, May. Yeah, West Palm Beach in May. And I had this beautiful scale aircraft. No, there's hundreds. Yeah, dozens of beautiful scale aircraft and the best builders and pilots from all over the world. Yeah. And they're there. They're there to find out who's the, the best dressed. No, the, the top dog. The, the big cheese. Yeah. No, they're uh, looking for the top gun. Warm and breezy under partly sunny skies, the third Top Gun Invitational got underway. Thursday and Friday, all planes were static judged, while pilots got familiar with the flying site. The field normally used for polo is a beautifully maintained shortcut turf. As an airfield, this gave pilots a long and very wide runway, a definite advantage in the crosswind conditions that persisted over the weekend. The West Palm Beach Polo Club was designed for international sporting events, which makes it perfect for Top Gun. It takes major sponsorship to underwrite an event like this. That support came from Pacer Technologies and Model Airplane News, as well as many contributors. The commentary provided by Sam Wright and Dave Platt kept 10,000 people entertained, informed, and very involved as the competition progressed. To say that the models competing at Top Gun are great replicas of the full size is an understatement. These are complex, fantastic machines. But as we will see, it takes more than a beautiful model to win at Top Gun. 50% of a competitor's score comes from flying the aircraft. In a 5 to 10 mile per hour crosswind, pilots will demonstrate what the full size would look like, fly like, as well as demonstrating mechanical options such as retracts, flaps, bomb drop, lights, and tank drop. And if the plane sounds like the real thing, it doesn't hurt. Frank Tiano is the originator and driving force behind Top Gun. He created the event to give scale modelers a greater challenge in a well-organized competition. This is David Toyer from Northamptonshire, England. David is competing with his one-quarter scale Hawker Hurricane. The plane has a wingspan of 120 inches and is powered with a King 100 engine. David included flaps, tank drop, and landing lights. This is a large model and weighs in at 38 pounds. A formidable lineup of Sky Raiders were competing this year. Rick Lewis, 
pilot of 504. He is the designer and has kitted the aircraft. He used Douglas three-point conical loftings and engineered it to a size to use the Webra bully engine. With 90 inches of wingspan, the plane weighs 36 pounds. Rick tells us the hardest part of the project was the wing folding mechanism. The landing gear were created using Douglas engineering drawings. We ask Rick how the plane flies. First off, it's a heavy airplane. Uh, 36 pounds. Um, I, I think you could probably with this airplane go to 40 pounds and it would still fly well. Uh, but when you go to the wing folding and the scale gear and all the other things that are involved with it, uh, it, had, it got heavy on us. If it were a 25 pound airplane, I think I could honestly say it's like flying a trainer. Right now it's like flying a trainer, but you're an advanced trainer flyer. Okay, not a serious statement. Uh, in fact, in this first round, uh, we've got kind of a, a funny quartering crosswind here. And I got the one wing high and it just blew me right down, pushing me down with the crosswind. And I just gave it a bunch of aileron and just uh, greased the landing easily. So it is. It's a very responsive, thoroughbred kind of an airplane. At the judging table, here is Brian O'Mara with his Zero built from a Dave Platt kit. Each plane was static judged for 15 minutes. Judges scored the plane on accuracy of scale outline, the finish, including color and markings, and craftsmanship. There was only an 8.01 point spread among the top 10 static scores. Here's Chuck Fuller's Sukhoi Su-26M. Chuck knows how to entertain a crowd with this aerobatic bird. The Byron Originals kit is powered with a Sax 3.7 and weighs 19 pounds. And rolling it back over to the correct position. And look at the beautiful colors of this aircraft up close. There are 15 entries for team scale at Top Gun. This Beechcraft C-45 was entered by Nick Ziroli Sr. and Bill Steffs. Nick and Bill took second place at the 1990 Top Gun team scale with the Ziroli B-25. Nick Ziroli is the pilot as well as the designer. Bill Steffs, the builder, used primarily balsa in construction and has powered the Beechcraft with a pair of Quadra 35s. He used Robard retracts. The C-45 is a one-fifth scale and weighs 35 pounds. Bill tells us the plane took four to five months to build and three to four to finish. The plane has 20,000 rivets. Bill says if you use Zeroli plans, Robart retracts, and Zap products, you're going to have a good airplane. We asked Nick how the Beechcraft flies. It flies very easily. Uh, we had a one-engine-out situation last night and didn't seem to bother it too much, although it was on a final, but uh, or almost final, so it wasn't bad. But it, it flies very well, very well. It's uh, I wouldn't call it a trainer, but it's if anybody that can fly anything above a trainer would have no problem flying the beach. And it is an impressive airplane, like you say. This one has two quarter 35s in it for power. We have another one we're flying that has two Zenwa 38s, and they both go equally well. And they, it it is acrobatic. It just makes a beautiful airplane. In between rounds of competition, the show keeps going. Here is Mike Kessler's P-38, flown by Don Muddyman. 
Bill Corso joins Don in the air with his zero to give the audience a dose of Warbird heavy metal action. Bubba Spivey and Wayne Voiles performed aerobatics formation flight with two Lanier RC Stingers. Returning now to the competition, the F-18 Hornet is familiar to most RC modelers. Built and flown by Bob Fiorenzi, Bob won the first Top Gun Invitational in 1989 with this aircraft. And it's easy to see why. Bob flies the Hornet clean and consistent, even in a strong crosswind. The F-18 Hornet is a yellow aircraft prototype with a fiberglass fuselage. For power, it has two OS-91 ducted fan engines spinning a pair of Dynamax fans. With 58 inches of wingspan, the Hornet is 110 inches long and weighs 27 pounds. In addition to winning the 89 Top Gun, Bob and his Hornet won first place at the 85 Nationals and the 88 Scale Masters. Another competitor from Great Britain, Fred Beard, has brought this detailed de Havilland 82 Tiger Moth. Fred started flying Tiger Moths five years ago. Fred tells us after many requests, he's now made a kit available of this one-third scale biplane. This de Havilland model is not what you would call standard balsa wood construction. In fact, there's not a single piece of balsa in it. The construction is ply and aluminum. The ribs are injected molded, and there are over 400 metal brackets in the plane. Fred was worried the plane would come out heavy, but in fact it weighs in at a mere 24 pounds. She's a fair weather flyer, says Fred.
This is Mel Whitley's Hawker Sea Fury. Mel drew and engineered the Hawker, and this is the third one he has built. Mel explains he built so many Mustangs, he finally got tired of it, even though he still likes the big, powerful warbirds. Also, the Sea Fury is not a plane you see modeled every day. The Sea Fury was primarily used in Korea. Many of the aircraft found their way into the Iraqi Air Force. They are slowly trickling back into this country, being rebuilt and flown in air shows and races. Mel has used the OS Twin for power. He, in fact, designed the aircraft around the engine. The hardest part of this project, according to Mel, was the retracts. They are unusual on the Sea Fury and needed to be designed and machined. They are operated electrically. Mel says he used the OS 300 Twin because it has plenty of power and has the right sound. And sound, according to Mel, is more important these days in scale competition. This unique twin-engine biplane represents another competitor from the United Kingdom, Richard Crapp. This is a very large aircraft with a wingspan of 148 inches. It's a one-quarter scale, which Richard Scratch built. It utilizes 14 servos and has operating bomb drop and landing lights. The wood frame is covered with Solartex, and the model weighs 30 pounds. Power is supplied by two Enya 120R four-stroke engines. The aircraft is a military version of the de Havilland DH-89M Dragon. Richard has been given the best biplane award for his unusual entry. Through the 1930s, the de Havilland Dragon was used in developing air transportation throughout the world. During World War II, the Dragon was converted for military purposes. The aircraft stayed in production through the end of World War II. This is Ron Gilman's F-86 Sabre. With this outstanding aircraft, Ron won the 1990 Top Gun Championship. The Sabre is a Bob Violet kit, one of six competing at Top Gun this year. Ron has featured drop tanks, functioning speed brakes and retracks. After finishing all four rounds, Ron lost his F-86 during a demonstration flight, an unfortunate loss. Ron's flight scores were consistently high all four rounds, which will give him third place honors this year. A BVM F-86 will also win second place at this year's Top Gun. This is Terry Nitch's F-86F Putty Tat. Terry edged out Ron Gilman for second place by only 28 hundredths of a point. His plane weighs in at 10 and a half pounds, and Terry has powered his Sabrejet with the BVM-81 engine. In fact, all of the six competitors flying F-86s are powered with the BVM-81 engine and are using the Viojet fan system. Terry Nitches taxes out for a practice flight. Terry shows us even the most Top Gun kind of guy can bump a switch at the wrong time.
And here is Bob Violet, owner of Bob Violet's Models. Bob is competing with the prototype F-86. This venerable aircraft has, to its credit, a first place at the 1989 Scale Masters and second place at the 1990 Top Gun Invitational. Bob says it has over 150 flights and still flies great. The F-86 has been clocked at over 160 miles per hour. Taking off is Garland Hamilton, U.S. Marine Master Sergeant. Garland has returned from the Gulf War and Desert Storm just in time to compete in his first Top Gun Invitational. Garland has chosen the 461st Fighter Day Squadron color and markings for his Sabre. The F-86 story continues. In team scale, there is another F-86, built by Paul Schuschler and piloted by Bob Violet's daughter, Patty Violet. Patty is the first female ever to compete at the Top Gun Invitational. Of all the historic achievements of the F-86, it's interesting to note that the first woman to go supersonic was Jacqueline Cochran, flying a North American F-86 Sabre, May 18, 1953. We asked Patty what it was like to fly the F-86. Great flying an airplane. It's um, very smooth. The drop tanks are very smooth coming off and um, loops wonderfully. It's all trimmed out. He did a great job. What's it like being the only female flying at the Top Gun? It's a great honor. I'm thrilled that Frank and, and Carol asked me, but I really don't look at it as any different. But um, I practiced a lot to come here, and hopefully we'll two of us put together will do okay. okay. We asked Paul Schusler to describe his F-86 Sabre project. Um, it's pretty much the standard Bob Violet Models kit. Um, it's done in the paint scheme of the 1956 gunnery meet held at Nellis Air Force Base. And um, that's about it. It's done, the airplane was typical fiberglass and foam project. It has the Viojet fan unit in it, the KBV-82, uh, the quiet pipe. It has Bob Violet retracts in it. Uh, the finish is polyester uh, resin, K&B resin and cloth and it's acrylic lacquer all the way through, from the primer all the way through to the final clear coat. Uh, it has a, a Jack Dorman um, interior in it, and that's about it. Really. Keeping a show this size running smoothly has got to be a challenge. Frank Tiano makes it look easy. He's teamed up with Don Smith and is competing in team scale. Don has built from one of his own plans a Henschel HS-129 with 93 inches of wingspan and power supplied by two Zenoa G-23 engines. The aircraft weighs 20 pounds. The Henschel 129 was designed specifically for the Luftwaffe as a tank buster. Until the HS-129 came along, the anti-tank role was carried out by the JU-87G Stuka. Frank expertly sets the HS-129 down with one engine dead. This is the prototype of the new Proctor kit, the Albatross D-5A. Builder of this model is Dick Hansen, Dick is an optician from Oregon with 30 years RC experience. Hey, all I'm Dick Hansen from Portland, Oregon, a member of the Portland Sky Knights. And I've uh, flown in the Top Gun Invitational uh, three years in a row now. Uh, I brought my Albatross down here for the competition. Uh, it's a prototype kit for Proctor Enterprises. Uh, we flew it yesterday and had some real bad problems in the air. So we decided it's uh, down for the weekend. Yeah, this is standard Proctor kit. That's, uh, Balsa, pine, spruce, aluminum, 
all kinds of woods in there. Um, it, uh, you could build it a little lighter than that if you like, but uh, it comes out around 20 pounds at least. Because of radio problems, Dick grounded the Albatross and flew his backup plane, the Newport 28. We asked Dick Hansen to tell us about the Newport. Well, the Newport 28 is the uh, second scale kit that uh, Lou Proctor designed. It's a quarter scale, like the Albatross, and uh, Lou designed his after that Swiss Newport in, in Switzerland. I uh, designed mine after the, the U.S. Navy version that they got after the war to, to uh, experiment with uh, uh, shooting off battleships, uh, catapulting off battleships and cruisers. And it weighs 17 and a half pounds. Uh, it's got a Chinese twin star twin cylinder, two-stroke uh, two engine in it, on, a, on glow, um, flies real good. In fact, it's the best flying uh, Proctor, I, I believe, in their stable. They have four nice giant scale kits, and it's, it's the nicest flying airplane. Including the new... Uh... It, it flies better than the Albatross because of the weight difference, I think. Plus, it's a little cleaner airplane. So, a little lighter wing loading, and it, uh, it just grooves better. Yeah. Taxiing in is a British team entry, a 122-inch wingspan de Havilland Mosquito. Builder of this impressive aircraft is Peter Guyver with pilot Richard Rawl. Peter has powered this giant with twin Zenoa G-38s. Features of the Mosquito are bomb drop, tank drop, flaps, landing lights, and scratch-built retracts. Here is a fine example of a quarter-scale DR-1 Fokker triplane. We're going to let the builder pilot of this model speak for himself. Good morning, my name is Bob Hamft and I hail from Alberta, Alabama, a small town just about 20 miles west of Pensacola, Florida. I'm here for my third Top Gun meet and this year I've opted to fly a World War I for my third Top Gun meet, and this year I opted to build and bring a DR-1 Fokker triplane. Uh, most people associate the triplane with a fellow by the name of the Baron von Richthofen. This particular airplane is a true quarter scale. It's a prototype, uh, first in the line of three kits that will re be re produced by Glenn Torrance models. Uh, the airplane that I have opted to build and bring is one that was made famous by a lieutenant who was the CO of JASTA 7 during World War I, and his name was Joseph Jacobs. Uh, the story goes that he had three all-black Fokkers at his disposal, and the black Fokker was very uncommon at that time. Uh, most airplanes flown by the, by the Germans were much more colorful. His credits included 47 victories, and he went on to become the eighth ace for the Germans during World War I. This particular airplane is just quarter scale, like I said, having a wingspan of 71 inches. It weighs approximately 15 pounds. It's powered by an OS-160 twin. Uh, it's covered with SIG coverall and painted with, initially, aero-gloss dope and an overspray of K&B epoxy. Uh, the airplane is a lot of fun to fly off of grass, not much for flying off of hard surfaces. This is Corvin Miller's Globe Swift. Corvin has built this plane with balsa and plywood. 
Power is supplied by an OS-160 twin spinning an 18.8 prop. Weight is 20 and a half pounds with a wingspan of 82 inches. The Globe Swift was given the Best Civilian Aircraft Award. Designed after World War II, the aircraft was intended to give civilians an airplane that flew like a fighter. The P-35A was the first all-metal low-wing fighter. It followed the P-26P shooter into the Air Force inventory. This beautiful replica was built and flown by Colonel Art Johnson. Construction is all balsa wood, and the finish is 5,000-inch thick aluminum. At 22 pounds, power is supplied by an OS-3500 and an 1810 Zinger prop. Art tells us the aluminum added about two pounds to the aircraft. We asked Art to tell us about the finish on the P-35. 5,000 is thick uh, uh, commercial uh, tape, actually. It comes in a six-inch wide roll, uh, quite long, uh, fairly expensive in the size you buy it in. But uh, hopefully they'll find a source for uh, smaller purchases of this uh, type tape. The the bottle has to be finished uh, completely as though you were going to paint it before you use this because uh, it's put on with a uh, tongue depressor, uh, actually squeegeed onto the airplane to get all of the, uh, any air bubbles or marks uh, out of it. Uh, it's not as difficult to put on as I thought. Uh, we'll have a, an article in uh, RC Modeler magazine on how to do this. Uh, and the particular model here is a uh, P-35A a copy of uh, which is now in the uh, Weeks Air Museum in Miami. Uh, that made it rather convenient to go down and measure all of the uh, parts, uh, markings, and all the other details on the aircraft and uh, incorporate those measurements into the model. The uh, plans were drawn on the computer on a CAD system. It uh, made good uh, therapy to recover from a heart attack I had about a year ago. <laughs> This Lear 35A, built by Mark Frankel, is entered in team scale. Dennis Crooks, a renowned ducted fan pilot, has teamed up with Mark to fly the Lear. Mark says the Lear was a challenge because the engines are off from the center line of the aircraft. This complicates the project. Also, the Lear has a fairly high wing loading. After overcoming these challenges, the Lear flies very stable, according to Dennis. Mark built the Lear 35 using lofting drawings he acquired from Learjet. For power, two OS-65 engines were used, turning Dynamax fans. Introduced in the 1970s, the Lear 35 became the most popular business jet, with nearly 700 being built to date. Wayne Seward has come to Top Gun with this Nakajima KI-84 Hyatt, codenamed Frank. 
With 88 inches of wingspan and 32 pounds of weight, Wayne has powered the scratch-built KI-84 with a Sax 4.2 engine. The weathering and detail in the finish is exceptional, winning the Critics' Choice Award. We asked Wayne to tell us about the finish on his KI-84 frame. Uh, the finish on this airplane, uh, I've, I've looked through books and Coco Fan books, and, which is a very good source of documentation, and a couple other publication pamphlets that I've gotten on the Frank. And everything I've seen, it's been a very, very weather-beaten finish. Uh, the white patches behind the red rondels on this airplane indicate that it was of the home guard. And everything, even in the home guard that I found, or pictures of it, were really badly maintained on the exterior finish. And uh, consequently, I, I elected to uh, go a little bit away from the norm here and try and get a, a finish on here that was uh, uh, comparable to what the publications had. So uh, I worked very diligently, shall we say, to, uh, to dirty this airplane up. Uh, I tell a lot of people I worked on it for a year and built it for a year, then I beat on it for a year. So. Uh, that's kind of how the airplane has gotten the way it looks, although there are some specific things that I have done to the airplane and, and a lot of shadowing effect with uh, very, very thinly diluted black spray paint with an airbrush and also rubbing burnt umber watercolor thinned down very much uh, with a rag, rubbing it into the, into the gray finish underneath and rubbing it into some of the olive drab finish on the top. Also, I've added some white, a little bit of white paint to the olive drab paint to get sort of a, a, a faded out look. And, uh, and then also after, it's all done in lacquers and that were color matched to the federal standard numbers. And then after that, the, uh, the colors that uh, were all covered over with a, with a Del Clear uh, finish with a flattening agent in it. And uh, there are some panels on the airplane that are real aluminum that I wanted uh, to simulate the panels that are taken on and off the aircraft for servicing work around the machine guns. I wanted those to be out of aluminum so I could actually scratch the paint back off from those panels because there's, there's no way to duplicate that type of finish without the actual aluminum and without actually scraping the paint off from it. Uh, you, can, you can do it with silver paint, but it's, it's marginal in comparison to the real thing. So I've used some panels on this one. Uh, I've used uh, real aluminum on the struts and on the inner gear doors, and I've scratched that up and, uh, and dirtied it up because they, most of these things were used uh, in the islands and subject to, to salt water conditions, and, and uh, some of these aircraft that I reviewed in the uh, documentation that I do have, there's, there's a whole panel missing of paint. Uh, so I tried my best to duplicate what I thought and I do note that in my documentation to the judges that, in my opinion, this is what this aircraft should represent. In expert class, top honors went to Mel Whitley and his unforgettable Sea Fury. In team scale, Jeff Combs and Kim Foster took first place. More than $25,000 in cash and prizes were given out this year at Top Gun. Top Gun 1992 will be held once again at the West Palm Beach Polo Club May 7th, 1992. And don't worry, RC Video will be there too. Quadra, the name that has become a symbol since it started the large-scale movement 15 years ago. Quadra stands for reliability and excellent value. Quadra engines are now crafted by Aero in Perth, Canada. 
The Q35S, the introduction level engine, now produces 2.5 horsepower and still weighs only 3.8 pounds. It comes completely equipped with aluminum mount and a good muffler. The larger brother is the Q42P engine, preferred by some and largely used in models supplied by Byron Originals. This engine is renowned for its easy starting. It produces three horsepower and still weighs only four pounds. The engine comes complete with an aluminum mount and a muffler. Our deluxe model in the 42cc size is the Q42CD, featuring a third bearing at the location of the points with a spring starter built into the mount. The next step up is the Q52S engine. Since its introduction in 1982, the engine has seen many improvements. The latest include a larger bore cylinder, modified intake and exhaust timing, and a larger carb insulator. The cylinder is bored and Nicosil plated. It also features a cam-turned piston with a single cast piston ring. The Q52S produces 4.5 horsepower and weighs 5.1 pounds without the muffler. The popularity of models weighing over 30 pounds provides an ideal application for the Quadra 100. It produces 8.5 horsepower and weighs 7.9 pounds. It has seen extended duty since 1982 in military applications. This Quadra loves to excel with propellers 24 inch and larger. We supply this engine with an aluminum mount, spring starter and compression release valve for easier starting and a large volume muffler. To round off the Quadra lineup, we now have a Q35 and Q42 hobby engine, which is used in helicopters, boats, and RC cars. It is available in either clockwise or counterclockwise rotation and comes completely equipped with the aluminum mount, a muffler, and a combination blower fan and pull starter. Quadra Aero the name that has symbolized large-scale modeling for 15 years. Announcing the first airborne video contest. If you've been experimenting with video on board your RC aircraft, send us your best shots. You could win a new 8mm video camcorder, as well as many RC prizes. Make a copy onto VHS of your best airborne shots and send them to Airborne Video Contest, P.O. Box 319, Easton, Maryland, 21601. The deadline is September 1st, 1992, so get those cameras rolling. <laughs>